Well, a warm welcome to this talk, Thursday the 13th of July. Now, I'm going to show you a slide from the authorities in Western Australia, and from this you can decide whether you want to watch this video or not. The rate of adverse reactions to COVID vaccines has now been published for 2021. It's six months late, but it is also a very honest report. The blue line here, the blue arrow, shows when COVID vaccines were introduced. These are adverse events following immunisations reported by the Western Australian authorities or to the Western Australian authorities 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021 when the COVID vaccines were introduced. And we see this massive increase in adverse reactions to vaccines which have been reported now of course, immediately you're going to say, well, just a minute, there was a lot more COVID vaccines given. Well, that's true. To an extent, that's true. But the rate of adverse reactions in the COVID vaccines were over 20, about 24 times higher per vaccine dose given. So this is a quite uh, outrageous amount of adverse reactions. It's great that Western Australia have come up with this data. It's six months later than we were expecting this report, but they've come up with it. And it's a very honest report. Let's hope the United States government and the United Kingdom government follow through with the level of uh, candour that we're seeing from the Western Australian authorities. So this is the report here, Western Australian Vaccine Safety Surveillance for 2021. Government of Western Australia Department of Health, so all official data. And of course, we don't know the rate of underreporting in Western Australia, but in the United Kingdom we do know from British Medical Journal data that perhaps only about 10% of serious adverse reactions are reported. So these represent, in my view, absolute minimal levels. And if I had known this prior to being vaccinated in 2021 myself, there is no way I would have accepted this vaccine. These rates of adverse reactions for me, for my personal risk, are just way too high and for any other sensible thinking person, quite unacceptable levels. Uh, so that's what this is about. Basically, we're going to unpack this graph and give a bit more detail on it. And it's not a comfortable video to watch. I've found it pretty uncomfortable to prepare, to, to be quite honest. Um, but it's all it's all official data so um government of western australia that's the report check it out for yourself report describes adverse events following immunization adverse events following immunization so many acronyms um, reported to the western australian vaccine safety surveillance system so that's their system of doing that for vaccinations received in 2021 doesn't tell us about 2022 it only tells us what it is we're looking forward to the 2022 data at some point, but as I say, the report from Western Australia is actually a very honest report and uh, easy to read. Let's hope other uh, jurisdictions follow suit. Uh, the format of this annual report is to enable the description of the impact of the programme of COVID vaccines starting in February uh, 2021, which is when uh, the programme started. And again, we remind ourselves just after that, the adverse reactions just went through the uh, through the roof compared to what they had been uh, in the past. Uh, in 2021 in Western Australia, so 5.7 vaccine doses were admit, administered altogether. That's all vaccines given in Western Australia, paediatric vaccines, influenza vaccines, COVID vaccines, everything. Up, up from, uh, it would have been just over 2 million in 2020. So uh, of this, so... 3.9 million, just over 3.9, were COVID vaccines. So we see that the other vaccine programmes were going on. In 2021, a significant increase in the report of adverse events following immunisation. 10,726 individual reports in 2021, relatively small population in Western Australia, of course. So 10,726 reports in 2021. In 2020, there'd been 270. So we've gone up from 270 reports for the whole year to 10,726 reports for the whole year. This is an astronomical, unacceptable, in my view, increase. But these are the official data. We know these are figures are correct. Uh, 200 reports from influenza and routine vaccinations in 2021. So um, basically in 2021, there was a... So 2020, it was 270 adverse reactions from all vaccines. 
200 reports in 2021 from influenza and all other routine vaccinations. COVID vaccines, 10,726. These safety profiles are just incomparable. Chalk and cheese. It's just just incomparable, completely uh to call it to call it a vaccine it just becomes unrealistic it's like a completely different product um in terms of uh, adverse events and of course the way it works is completely different as well uh, unfortunately of these adverse events uh, of adverse events following immunization 10428 97 percent occurred after the covid vaccine similar volume of reports to the rest in australia as reported by the tga and there's some pretty good tga Therapeutic Goods Administration, which is kind of like their authorising body in Australia there. Uh, in Western Australia, total adverse events following uh, <coughs> following rate, um, uh, adverse events following immunisation rate, following COVID vaccine was 264.1 per 100,000 doses. And of course, that's working out at 0.24%. Um, if these are underreported by a factor of 10 do the maths for yourself. Of course, we don't know that, um, but that would be the situation if this was UK data, probably from the latest data that we have. Now, non-COVID vaccines in uh, Western Australia, it was um, 11.1 adverse events. So um, per 100,000 doses, COVID vaccines, 264.1 adverse events per 100,000. All the other non-COVID vaccines, 11 about 24 times higher per 100,000. So instead of 0.241%, it's 0.0111%. It's just an incomparable, an incomparable difference. Part of the reason we accepted this COVID vaccination programme in the early stages was it was called a vaccine, so we thought it'd be similar to all the other vaccines. But this is the data. Uh, by no means is it similar. Ordinary vaccines, old-fashioned vaccines, if you like, 11.1 per 100,000. COVID vaccines, 264 adverse events uh, per, per 100,000. That's the COVID. That's the ordinary ones, <coughs> dear me. Now, um, comparison with the United States for the COVID vaccines. Uh, in the United States, so remember in Australia, it was... Uh, 200, uh, 264 adverse events per 100,000. In the United States, it was 148. So we see that in America, the reporting system in the United States is not as good. Now, the specific Australian data, uh, AstraZeneca, 306 uh, per 100,000. Pfizer, 244. <clears throat> and Moderna, 281. And again, I put the American data there for comparison. And we see that every time... So there, for example, the Pfizer adverse reactions in Australia were twice as high as those reported in the United States, indicating that the Australian reporting system, while not perfect, is better than the one in the United States. Again, Moderna, 187 reported in the United States, 200, 281 reported in uh, Australia. So we see that we are getting better reporting from Australia compared to the United States. Uh, why do I say that? because that's what the uh, official authors of the report say. Uh, why this difference? The likely, this likely reflects the differences in the sensitivity of passive adverse event reporting system between the two jurisdictions. In other words, more events are being reported in Australia, less adverse events are being reported in the United States. Now, some of the important uh, adverse events following immunisation that have been specifically monitored this is part, the Western Australia, of course, are working with the Therapeutic Goods Administration for all of Australia. Uh, so anaphylaxis, they're following. Uh, thrombosis with thrombocytopenia, so blood clots with uh, low platelets, they're following. Immune thrombocytopenic pupera. Now, the pupera refers to the bleeding. Thrombo, uh, thrombocytes are the platelets, and penia means lack of. So when there's not enough platelets in the blood, you get bruising because they're responsible for blood clotting. Guillain-Barre syndrome, which is a polyneuritis, which causes a paralysis, usually temporary. Uh, myocarditis was reported. Uh, pericarditis, myopericarditis, which is both chest pain, deep venous thrombosis, pulmonary embolism, 
Bell's palsy were being particularly monitored, um, but we will show more adverse reactions. Now, let's just uh, take a look at some more data here. Now, this is um, th these are the rates of the most frequent reported reactions following scheduled vaccinations in 2021. So in other words, this is not COVID and we see injection site abscess, rash, fever, which is quite common and, uh, and tiredness. So th they're the kind of reports that we've uh, known about with scheduled vaccinations for children and influenza for decades. All, all my work and life we've known about these. Um, not happy about it, but the risk benefit analysis is often considered to be favourable. But with the, um, th this is the rates of most frequently reported reactions following the influenza. And again, we see rash, lethargy, okay, sore in the injection site, headaches, sore muscles, fairly uncommon. But this is the post-COVID vaccine, and we see headache, lethargy, myalgia, uh, infection site reactions, and chest pain. So we see a different profile, headache, muscle pain, and chest pain being uh, way massively more frequent after COVID vaccines compared to traditional vaccines. Now, here I've got a list of other side effects that have been reported. This is from the report. I'm not going to go through them all, but uh, these are non-COVID. These are COVID. So we see abdominal pain, for example, uh, 651 in COVID, uh, only one in traditional vaccines. Abscesses, anaphylaxis, sangioedema, um, uh, apnea with bradycardia, not breathing with a slow heart rate, uh, Bell's palsy, all of these side effects. Um, way higher on this row, way, way higher compared to uh, non-COVID vaccines. Um, th this one, for example, shows the particular adverse reactions from the uh, spike vax, which is the Moderna. Chest pain being the most common, which of course is remarkably concerning because it could well be cardiac uh, pain. In fact, we know in many cases it was uh, it was cardiac pain. Um <coughs> Moving on, uh, other side effects. Again, headache, pre-COVID vaccines, COVID vaccines. So headache, 13 in pre-COVID vaccines, 2,737 in COVID vaccines. And again, we see all of these being way higher in the COVID vaccine group. Quite horrendous list of side effects, to be quite honest. Swollen lymph nodes, meningitis. My. Look through them yourself. It's um, really quite horrendous high rates of side effects in the COVID vaccine group. I'm sorry to report. Shortness of breath. So traditional vaccine, six. COVID vaccine, 693. Again, completely, uh, completely incomparable and completely unacceptable um, figures. Uh, also, the Australian authorities mentioned that in 2021, uh, there was 2,125 appointments made at the Adult Vaccine Safety Clinic at Sir, uh, Sir Charles Gardner Hospital, which is where they report adverse uh, side effects. So uh, there was 1,125 referrals in 2021. Uh, in 2020, there was seven. So seven in 2020 pre-COVID vaccines. 1,125 um, with COVID vaccines. 439 appointments made at the Perth Children's Hospital Specialised Immunisation Clinic, and that was up 241 since 2020. Mercifully, uh, children weren't vaccinated until much later on in 2021, so this is not the full year data. Um, or or the, at least the children weren't being vaccinated for the full year. So I must say, I was utterly... Um, well, completely appalled by this report. Uh, other, other governments need to make their data as transparent. Congratulations to the government of Western Australia. Pity it was six months late, but it's a good report. Um, why aren't we getting similar transparency from New Zealand, Canada, United States, United Kingdom, Netherlands, everywhere? because it's just uh, dramatic and unacceptable increase in adverse reactions. Hard data. Can't really see how you argue with that. People will, but that's their problem. You've got my 
understanding of it. Read the report for yourself. All the references are there, as always. Um, we really need to come clean about this and prevent this unacceptable rate of adverse reactions in the future. And there's other adverse reactions I can't discuss on this medium. Yeah, yeah, stunning, quite stunning. Um, thank you for watching.